Dobro večer. Good evening. The topic of tonight's show, Out of the Box, are trolls in digital world, with the emphasis on their operation and the consequences on the societies. One of the reasons why the social networks are so attractive to the internet trolls is that they gather a much larger number of people than is the case, for example, with forums, blogs, internet portals, for example. Another important reason is that the social networks allow greater anonymity than is the case with some other social services. Communication in online environment is often impolite, insulting, aggressive, aiming to cause negative feelings with the other party. The specificity of the online environment is that the audience may easily stop communicating if they want to. Dear viewers, stay with us tonight and let's learn about concrete social and political consequences of anonymous designers of lies, propaganda, disinformation, which may become a serious threat to security of an individual, society or a whole country. In recent times, trolls have become professionals, uh, hired to push somebody's agenda, implement propaganda or spread misinformation and false news. What's the difference between them and bots? We'll try to learn tonight. Tonight we have a person who can offer answers to many questions in this area. Her name is Jessica Aro, and she is a Finnish uh, journalist, very popular, author of the book Putin's Trolls. In September 2014, she started researching pro-Russian internet trolls, but she herself became a victim, a target of their activities. This harassment has led to three people being sentenced uh, in October 2018. How to recognize in time the information war against West in the countries that are strategically oriented towards West? Jessica Aro, through, during her uh, investigative mission visited uh, St. Petersburg to uh, investigate the Agency for Internet Investigation, where she interviewed some employees in the troll factory who create false online accounts and producing false uh, stories. She is in Bosnia-Herzegovina on invitation of Atlantic Initiative uh, because of her book. It's a great pleasure to welcome this uh, awarded uh, uh, journalist, Jessica Aro, in the study of the Out of the Box. Good evening and thank you for being with us. Thank you so much. It's an honor to be here. Your investigation of this topic in your homeland, Finland, has turned you into a target of those who you were dealing with, a target of trolls who have uh, created an epic campaign of hate and harassment, campaign of threats, and you found uh, yourself in the center of it. First of all, how did you become interested in trolls? Who are they? And how do you recognize them? How do you define them? And how long uh, your ex uh, investigation lasted? about them originally back in 2014 when a super brave Russian journalists, the independent ones, had actually uncovered the so-called troll factory where these kids in their 20s worked as propaganda spreaders behind uh, fake and anonymous social media profiles filling the blogosphere and information sphere with pro-Putin propaganda. And as I started to look into it, and I realized even as a journalist, as a professional processor of information, it was sometimes very difficult to find out what is actually truth and what is not true. For example, what Russia was doing in Ukraine, because there was so much disinformation and lies being spread about that situation. So as I learned that there's also a troll factory, I wanted to know, can they really impact real people? Is it possible that social media profiles can actually pull real people's strings impact into their thinking or even their behavior. Uh, 
So I started a crowdsourced investigation in which I asked the audience to investigate it with me. So I asked the Finnish readers and audience of um, my employee, the Finnish Broadcasting Company, to look for this new phenomenon. And so we started to uh, make cooperation with the audience and started to uncover the troll techniques as well as how the trolls were trying to push people's buttons, to, to say. What was the main tool that they use? What were your main conclusions after your investigation? I've read your book that I'd mentioned in the announcement. It's called Putin's Trolls. It was published in Finnish and uh, translated into English. And I hope it will uh, be published in other languages too. You investigated uh, jihadis uh, earlier. Are there uh, similarities between them in their work? Definitely. The jihadists were already super active uh, abusing and exploiting the social media channels such as YouTube already back in 2010 uh, when I was already working as a journalist and they were recruiting new fighters to fight for their cause, for their jihad uh, with these extreme uh, speeches that they were giving using YouTube as their platform and also they were using, for example, uh, comment sections and discussion forums in order to recruit new fighters from different countries to go and fight um, in different countries, for example, to Somalia and elsewhere. And as I started to look into the Russian trolls activities, there were so many similarities that I was really struck. And um, for example, the Russian trolls and Russian propaganda architects who really organized these operations, they have really skillfully built this kind of uh, multi-layered international network that consists of, uh, for example, RT, former Russia Today, then Sputnik, these just full-blown pro-Kremlin, Putin's favorite propaganda channels that also operate really well on social media um, and are very viral and are shared really widely. Uh, also, they have um, then subsidiaries, uh, kind of daughter companies like Raptly, and then also they operate in many different languages. And many uh, people who consume this material online, they don't know that it is actually Kremlin-funded uh, propaganda. Uh, and, th and they don't even know that, of course, they don't know that even the leaders of these channels say it out loud, openly, that these are tools of information warfare. As, for example, RT's head, chief editor, Margarita Simonian, has said openly already back in 2012. And so, and as part of these uh, networks, there are also, I believe, hundreds or even more proxy fake news sites operated around, for example, Europe, in different European countries, uh, which are uh, spreading Russian troll materials, but they are posing as if they are local production. But what they actually do is, for example, they translate Russia Today materials into local languages and do other types of, of cooperation uh, with uh, Russian troll architects and masters. So, and then there is the uh, troll network that whose job is to spread links to these materials internationally and, and to spread it even further. In your interview that you gave to the BBC, you said that everything had started uh, when this horrible racist uh, neo-Nazi uh, page that promotes false news started publishing uh, dozens or hundreds of texts about you where they pose you uh, as uh, a person with uh, mental damage or a person who uh, spreads conspiracy theories. I am taking these words from your book, Putin's Trolls. It's not easy to 
cope with this, especially at the time when it's happening. I'm sure that even now, after this uh, time, it's not easy to accept that one has been uh, a target of such accusations. Many people are sensitive to this. So how did you cope? At some point, I didn't cope. At the worst parts, I was forced to move abroad uh, to be able to lead a distantly normal life and to be able to finalize my book writing because there is a crowd of people, a full population of people who have been brainwashed to believe that I am actually a threat to, for example, Finnish national security and that I am some kind of dangerous agent of United States and CIA and NATO uh, because this is the narrative and conspiracy theories that have been put out there after I started my investigations. And you know, I have to tell you, it started uh, from Russian fake news sites. Just a couple of days after I initially began uh, searching uh, for Russian trolls and it continued from there to this uh, fake news site which you mentioned called what the fuck paper sorry my language but that's the name of the news site and it is this pro Kremlin uh, pro neo-nazi and really far right this just hate mongering website which really can turn real people into animals and that is uh, exactly uh, what I'm most worried about uh, and what I found in my investigations that unfortunately this uh, Russian social media propaganda is designed to target your emotions and to control your actions through those emotions. So that's why it really can turn into uh, a grave threat to de not just democracies or liberties and freedoms of Western countries, but also to uh, securities of individuals or, or nations. What's the influence of such platforms? What's the influence of such um, media sites? You come from Finland, the country that from the point of view of Bosnia-Herzegovina appears very safe, if not the safest uh, in the world. And nobody who is looking at Finland from this perspective can believe uh, this that you are saying. I can't believe that uh, the security system is so fragile in such a, a, a strong country as Finland. So has Finland taken any legal measures or uh, maybe changed some legislation uh, on internet portals to prevent uh, hate speech because uh, the government bodies have processed individuals who and they were convicted for spreading hatred against you a heavy legislation that regulates the use of speech and a language which regular journalists like myself uh, have to obey. So we have to check that we don't, for example, spread libels or that we don't defame anyone or we don't threaten anyone. Uh, but there is a legislation in place in order to uh, hinder people from doing that. But the problem with these uh, hate sites and these pro-Kremlin sites uh, is that they just don't care about the legislation, so they just break it in and out, and it's actually quite difficult to try and stop them when these sites are being controlled and governed from places like Donbass or eastern Ukraine uh, under Russian occupation. So. And even some of the chief editors of such sites are actually giving the finger to the Finnish officials and telling them, ha ha ha, try and come and catch us from Donbass, where we are uh, stationed at the moment. So this is international crime, you can, you can really say. So it would really need international uh, counter attempts from, for example, intelligence agencies and police agencies internationally but um, 
yes, unfortunately, even highly educated people like the Finnish people uh, can be and will be brainwashed uh, into believing, for example, uh, pro-Putin's lies and troll materials. And unfortunately, everyone is uh, prone to believing in such a material. And that's why it's really important to try and build resilience of nations and populations. In, at one part of your book, you say that the web pages of hatred brainwashed uh, even some of your friends and turned them into your enemies. Uh, how painful can it be? Just unbear I, I cannot even describe it. I would have never believed it if I didn't witness it with my own eyes. I just, I mean, <laughs> we had good times with these people. I thought I knew them. But one of them read only one filth piece about myself and uh, started writing trash about me uh, publicly on social media. Another sent me a death threat, um, a picture of someone being execu executed. And the third, uh, he sent me just smears and called me um, really horrible names on social media. And I had to report two of them to the police because they were so aggressive. So this really, in my mind, tells how powerful the disinformation can, can really be. And, but this is also the explanation why we are seeing so many families being split apart, for example, in Russia, because other part of the family believes in Putin's propaganda and the other doesn't. So. And the s same um, is happening in, for example, in the United States, where the discussions are very divided, as well as in Europe in some issues, for example, immigration, uh, as well as COVID policies, where Russian trolls are also fueling the conflict between people. When you were investigating the trolls, what concrete evidence did you manage to find to present them as a journalist, uh, as a relevant uh, evidence uh, of proof of your claims that uh, Kremlin is involved in social media processes and activities in your country, in your Finland? One super important part of evidence is that I followed the activities of Russian embassies, social media sites, for example, the Helsinki embassies, Twitter site, as well as Facebook site. And they were not doing diplomacy there. They were trolling. And they were also pushing more followers to real anonymous uh, trolls, as well as simultaneously pushing for funny videos which were portraying occupation of Russia against Finland. And, for example, pictures of deceased people claiming that they were the end result of Ukrainian aggression. And they were constantly pushing for the idea, already back in 2014 and 2015, that it was indeed Ukraine that is the aggressor and not Russia. And also they were participating in, for example, hijacking hashtags from individual Finnish bloggers and uh, people who were discussing on Twitter. And then when you started following uh, those trolls that these Russian embassies uh, sites were retweeting and promoting on social media, then you could gather more and more evidence. Also, of course, I spoke with um, or exchanged information with about 200 different sources. And I checked so many different sites and so many different hints and tips that were shared with me. And I indeed found troll activities also from from the biggest Russian-speaking discussion forum in Finland, as well as so many other places. So what 
kind of content did you find there? Were there stories or contents that alarmed you or uh, pointed against West as anti-West propaganda involved in uh, the West uh, happening in the Western space? Russian trolls were already back then obsessed about Ukraine. They were promoting the idea, for example, that it is fascists and Nazis who have taken over Ukraine, and it is Western fascists and Nazis who are waging war in Ukraine, and that Russia did not step their foot in Ukrainian soil, and Russia annexed Crimea uh, legally, uh, as well as it was Ukrainian fighter that shot down MH17. And you know what? Often these trolls were spreading a material that was originating from the Kremlin directly, either from the defense ministry or then from the Kremlin's propaganda machinery. So the trolls were merely echoing and promoting or spreading that anti-Ukrainian or anti-Western content in more simplistic form, such as memes or videos. You know, you have to give the Russian troll factory masterminds the credit because they are really good at serving different kinds of audiences and target groups. So they give text content to people who really want to read, uh, like long, long content, um, and they also give then memes to people who just want to be struck by some kind of image and not be bothered with uh, longer texts. And mm, yeah, so they were basically already then accusing Western uh, world, European Union, NATO, as well as United States of waging war in Ukraine. So this is what the trolls were spreading already back then, and now we are seeing what Putin as a master troll is spreading also internationally. Has it been possible to follow the trail of money? Is it often the case that individuals who accept to this pro-Russian and pro-Putin narrative do that uh, as volunteers? They are seduced by this ideology that wants to undermine the West and Western values, or are these people who actually receive money? to do what they're doing, uh, uh, this cyber activity? It seems that there are different forms of uh, money or some other types of rewards uh, being uh, contributed to the people who engage in pro-Kremlin information activities. Troll factory is one form of it. So that is the factory in which people are being paid monthly salary uh, for working 12-hour shifts, promoting fake news and fake commentary, uh, even uh, targeting English audiences or African audiences, as we now know that the Russian trolls are doing. Then there are the freelancers who operate in other countries, but are also provided some kind of monetary compensation for their work. We found in Finland that some people were paid, for example, a so-called loan, or then bitcoins. And those bitcoins were surprisingly provided by some uh, businessman who wanted to promote uh, independent journalism, referring to what the fuck papers content, this program in fake news site. So there are these bitcoin millionaires who are willing to also finance, finance this material. Then there is the use of crowdfunding as well as PayPal campaigns, uh, as well as direct money collecting. And sometimes there is a mo a money laundering also involved in such activities. Is the Finnish judiciary managed to follow the trail of these activities? And now, after your work, after the whole story and the the book have then 
have they been mitigated? Uh, what's uh, how the cyberspace in your country look like today? Is it any better? Unfortunately, the cyberspace in Finnish language, um, let's say it at the deep side of the information space, uh, looks really nasty at the moment. And the community of pro Kremlin lie believers is, uh, it seems to be growing, as well as the community of other conspiracy theory believers who really follow the lead of these social media influencers who provide them with all types of Kremlin-fed material. So they're also quite good at building these communities. And as journalists, I really envy them because they actually put a lot of time and effort in building and building their audiences using Facebook or YouTube and other platforms. So. Um, Unfortunately, there hasn't been so much uh, of that uh, money tracing going, uh, at least in Finland, but internationally there has been many police investigations that have looked partly what you are asking for, uh, but also money being uh, basically robbed by Putin and his cronies and later being laundered and used uh, to finance, for example, pro-Kremlin parties in the European countries. We'll come back to our interview and we'll talk about many other issues, but before that, we'll have a short break. Uh, dear viewers, stay with us with the program of N1 Television. We'll be back in a couple of minutes with our guest, uh, Finnish investigative journalist Jessica Aro, author of the book Putin's Trolls, who will uh, answer many questions that uh, also impact us. So welcome back, dear viewers. You are watching Out of the Box. Our guest is Jessica Aro, investigative journalist from Finland, uh, author of the book Putin's Trolls, who knows this topic well. And she has been targeted by trolls in her own country that we, from here, uh, think is one of the safest countries, and she had to leave it. Uh, in 2017, if I'm not mistaken. In the meantime, she went back and uh, lives again in her own country. Jessica, how difficult uh, had it been to leave your homeland, your country? Have you stayed in touch with people in Finland when you left? Oh, extremely difficult. Of course, no one wants to do it. I just had to. At the moment when I made the decision, I felt like a prisoner in my own home. I was looking at my computer or my mobile phone, and it was an endless row of slurs, threats, rape fantasies, uh, drug uh, dreams, just all kinds of disgusting troll material, memes about my own face being just like messed up with some dirty colors and new and new fake news and so many people who just wanted to kill me and attack me and when I tried to ask for help from the police of course they could start investigating and they had done that but unfortunately the investigation did not stop the harassment or the crimes and I even had people following me physically so and and trying to film me and put those films uh, on these uh, fake news sites so I really felt more secure and even according to the police own estimate I was facing the threat of impulsive violence if I'm in the wrong place in the wrong time so basically if I bumped into someone who really hated me I could have had my ass kicked or worse so 
I really felt that it was the only decision and I did keep in contact with my loved ones, of course, but I also missed them so much all the time. But you know what? Even moving abroad did not end the flow of slurs because there are no borders online. There are no borders in the internet. So what's the situation now? You said you went back to Finland. Now, when you are walking the streets of your town, your city, do you still meet people who attack you verbally, harassing you or things like that? You know, I'm probably the only person who has really enjoyed the uh, pandemic restrictions because I had so many harassers uh, after me before the pandemic who were seriously following me into places and trying to violently uh, enter buildings where I was giving speeches and lectures about Russian trolls and information warfare. But the pandemic restrictions closed down everything and also closed down following me. So. Uh, it is still ongoing, but I try not to pay attention to it because there is nothing I can do about it. It will never change. It will never stop. Um, the convictions that have been given, they haven't helped. They haven't stopped. So I just try and mimic as normal life as possible. Here in Bosnia Herzegovina, and this is not your first time here, we often hear talk about bots, not so much about trolls. Maybe that's because we don't really distinguish between the two. We don't know what the trolls are, but we do know who the bots are and what's their purpose in the social networks and the comments under the articles. So we do have experience with the misinformation propaganda that are used, that aim to achieve a specific political goal. Very often that uh, uh, objective or goal is uh, uh, opposite of what uh, are the real interests of people and they do it using pseudonyms. So are the bots and trolls uh, synonyms or is there a difference between them? Are they allies? in the process, these dark scenarios, how would you define them? How could we recognize them in order to improve uh, their uh, media literacy? Right, so yeah, uh, bots and trolls in Russian information warfare serve the same goal. Uh, bots are probably a little bit, little bit more cheaper as they can be coded very quickly and uh, can be copied super quickly too and spread around on especially twitter is very bot friendly um, uh, environment so but the trolls are probably more costly they are op they are real humans who need to be paid salary uh, at least back in 2014 2015 the salary was around 600 euros uh, for super supervising trolls and then four to five hundred euros for uh, these regular uh, grassroots troll employees at the factory. So humans cost uh, more, also manpower costs more. Uh, so but they do the same. So basically the bots mm, pretend regular people, but they can be coded and programmed to spit the same message uh, at the same second or hourly or minutely or weekly. And unfortunately, many social media spheres are full of them. And sometimes uh, Twitter and even Facebook tells that even publicly that they have removed this inauthentic behavior. Uh, sometimes they even up, um, claim that it's rooted back to the Russian troll factory. So it is sometimes even uh, even some of it is removed, but unfortunately it's really uh, quickly set back up again. So they are, they are part of the same ecosystem. Can you explain 
using examples how Putin's regime propag uh, propaganda architects, how do they recruit foreigners to serve uh, their global destabilizing activities, to serve uh, their information warfare. Are sometimes uh, these trolls working in the interest of the Russian regime camouflaged as Western uh, circles, part of the Western circles. Often not easy to, to recognize as the Kremlin's players. You are at the core with this question because these people are amongst us and they are in basically everywhere and they have been infiltrated in our societies uh, even though they have been recruited already maybe 20 years ago 10 years ago and they have been cultivated and by Russian security services and they are sabotaging our societies and playing to the hands of uh, Putin so what we have witnessed for example in Finland uh, we have for example a very well-known uh, academic uh, who has become an asset for Russian security services as he serves as the representative of a really interesting think tank of the Kremlin in Moscow called Russian Institute of Strategic Studies, which is supervised by Russian intelligence service officers who are appointed by Putin himself. And this guy who I'm talking about who actually uh, initiated the harassment campaign against me and got convicted too. Uh, he is a Finnish citizen, but he speaks fluent Russian and he has himself said that he is the representative of this uh, institute and he has also been actively, for example, helping Finnish people to recruit in the Russian side of the war against Ukraine. So sometimes these, these people uh, do information activities against our societies and sometimes even worse. And there are other examples too. I don't know why so many Finnish people um, went to help the Russians and Putin's regime, but they went to help in the information warfare and they can even say it out loud. Uh, that they are uh, conducting information warfare. First, they tell publicly that they, for example, burned their military passport, uh, their Finnish military passport, and then they left to work for the Russians. And yeah, some of them do it openly, but unfortunately, many of them do it secretly. Is it uh, unpopular today? to relativize, uh, to question the Russian aggression against Ukraine. Is it unpopular to be pro-Russian? What's your impression now that you uh, came back to your homeland now? In the mainstream public debates and in the traditional press and traditional media, it is unbelievably uh, unpopular to promote Russian views and almost no one besides Putin and his cronies do that in uh, Finnish medias, um, the distinguished, the established medias. However, there is a growing community of uh, Putin sycophants, pro-Donald Trump uh, promoters, uh, troll activists, conspiracy theorists, who did not exist uh, 10 years ago. So there has been a massive spread and massive cultivation of such different extremes. And this is also one um, point and one target and goal of Russian information psychological warfare. They are cultivating all kinds of extremes who they find useful uh, in order to weaponize them to attack our societies from within. So what's the status of Finland now? 
with respect to the NATO alliance, and on the other hand, uh, with respect to the ultimatums of the Russian Federation and uh, Vladimir Putin. There's been a lot of debates, discussions uh, regarding this matter, and even a politician from our region, president of Croatia, Zoran Milanovic, mentioned sev several times that he will oppose uh, Finland joining NATO and he would uh, make it a condition of of a local issue election law here uh, this is you, you probably don't know about this but he wanted to condition Finland's joining in NATO but it was a very current topic at some point uh, is it still today Actually, I followed some of that, and it came to me as a surprise coming from uh, Croatia. But however, at the time, we are facing immense political pressure from Turkey, who is trying to exert us uh, to extradite some uh, Turkish um, inmates who have been convicted uh, in Turkey for political charges, but uh, have searched for an asylum in Finland. And uh, Turkey is using that in order to um, process our NATO application. So we have been, and many of us have been thinking, who is Turkey playing for? They are doing the same to Sweden, who applied to NATO simultaneously with us. Um, but we are really looking forward and hoping that one day we will become NATO members. But, you know, I think that, for example, Russia uh, wanted to campaign against Finnish uh, NATO membership for uh, decades and really aggressively because they know that we are a tough country and we have a will to defend our country and that is also what we will bring to NATO when we join one day. Has uh, Finland extradited these, these people, these asylum seekers that Erdogan wanted back to Turkey in order to support a Finnish uh, application? And what's the relationship between Turkey and Finland. Turkey is also a NATO member, but according to many international relevant organizations, human rights organizations, they are ranking very low in terms of respect for human rights and freedom. Finland has not, um, Finland has not extradited those people. Uh, there are ongoing uh, negotiations, but not about the extradition. Uh, I believe, and it would be quite far-fetched uh, for Finland to extradite them. But to just to make a, make a small point, I would have to check up on this. But this is now the recent news. Ex let me just check. Alex, is Alex here? Maybe not. He's maybe not here. But uh, I think this is the current current situation. But I really need to check up on that. And finally, Jessica, can we touch upon uh, this comparison between Bosnia-Herzegovina and Finland in the context of Russian influence and this uh, space? On one hand, uh, being, being between Russia and NATO. What would be your message to your colleagues, journalists in this country or in general public in this country? Is NATO way the security umbrella that we should uh, seek to get under or should we and should we articulate our criticism against Russia more clearly? 
journalist, I am going to pick the latter part of your question and definitely say yes to that one because I feel that it is our obligation as journalists uh, to provide the audience the information and opinions that they are entitled to receive uh, under the name of human rights and under the name of press uh, freedom and freedom of speech. So I feel that uh, we need to provide audience those opinions and ideas that Russia tries to oppress and Russia tries to silence. So as part of that, I really recommend uh, your fellow journalists and colleagues to continue seeking the truth, what Russia tries to hide, and to serve it openly to the audiences, as long as there is still freedoms that we can use to serve our audiences. Jessica, thank you very much for coming to Bosnia-Herzegovina and for being here uh, to the N1 television to share your personal but also very exciting professional story. I wish you uh, every success in your future work and I hope that your book uh, Putin Stalls will uh, come to our bookstores here in our language. Thank you so much. It was such a pleasure. Jessica Aro, investigative journalist from Finland, was the guest of the Out of the Box uh, program. We talked about Putin's trolls, her book that shook the uh, spirits in Finland, in Europe, and the, the whole world. Thank you, dear viewers, for your trust and stay with N1 TV.